Let's go, come on in. Woo! Good. Estimates of damage to the Philippines this year surpassed $787 million on Tuesday, as humanitarian agencies warned the true extent of the damage remains unknown, in part because rescuers are unable to access some of the disaster-stricken areas. Super Typhoon Rai, known locally as Odette, has now destroyed at least 375 localities since it broke through the archipelago late last week, the Philippine National Police said. At least 51,500 houses were reported to have been destroyed. More damage is expected to be confirmed as rescue operations continue. But humanitarian workers face the daunting task of reaching some areas cut off from littered and swampy roads, and some with telephones and internet disconnected. Senator Richard Gordon, chairman of the Philippine Red Cross, said Tuesday that five bridges on Palawan were destroyed by the storm. According to official figures for 2020, the western province is home to about 1 million people. The houses are completely destroyed. We are trying to send urgent aid, including water, food and medicine, Gordon said. The settlements were completely cut off. Addressing the international community, Gordon said funds were urgently needed for rescue efforts. Millions of people have been affected by this typhoon and supplies are scarce, he added. This year, hit Sargao Island on Thursday, a popular tourist destination and surfing spot in the Caraga region of northeastern Mindanao. Initially, the wind blew up to 260 km per hour, which is equivalent to a Category 5 storm. Many preemptive evacuations and preparations for the storm began earlier this week when heavy rain began to hit the country, but millions of people were still vulnerable. As the Rai moved west, it blew houses, trees and power cables along the way, bringing with it heavy rain, extensive flooding and landslides. The hurricane destroyed communities and left hundreds of thousands of people homeless in the neighboring city of Surigao, one of the worst hit areas. Survivors begged on the roads for food and water, surrounded by uprooted trees and electricity poles. Police were seen removing broken branches from the road. At least 4.1 million children were affected by the typhoon, according to Save the Children. Experts estimate that more than 16,000 families in badly affected Caraga are taking refuge in the cramped evacuation centers. Jerome Ballantin, the organization's humanitarian affairs manager, said the risk of the spread of the disease in these facilities was of great concern. We're starting to see the emergence of waterborne diseases, including diarrhea, Ballantin said. Sanitation is a huge problem in these evacuation centers. We are concerned about the safety of millions, including the most vulnerable children. Valentin expressed concern about the long-term problems that could arise from the devastating typhoon, including food security and education. Although we had not yet determined the extent of the damage, there has been widespread destruction in schools, Valentin said. Poorer, more vulnerable communities can be exploited after this disaster. Bibis na langit Kaya paraw tayo Paraw kami tumatak mo lang Yan ako doon Yan ako doon
The scenes of the destruction were reminiscent of Super Typhoon Haiyan, locally known as Yolanda, which hit the Philippines in November 2013. It was one of the worst storms to hit the country. Its high winds and huge storm surges have destroyed buildings, destroyed roads, and caused massive power and water cuts. The human-induced climate crisis is making typhoons, hurricanes and cyclones more intense and destructive, and the Philippines is one of the most climate-vulnerable countries in the world. The Catholic Church in the Philippines is mobilizing to help millions. A humanitarian alarm was raised. Many people affected by this disaster are desperate and in need of food, water, clothing, temporary shelter and medicine. They are limited in their towns and villages as most of the road networks are cut off. In addition, it is very difficult to get in touch with people now, and it is difficult for people to get in touch with the affected communities. Bishop Alberto says, Given our grave situation, we humbly approach you for donations of money, including basic necessities. We ask you to continue praying for us. The Archbishop of Cebu, Monsignor Jose Palma, asked everyone to show concrete solidarity with the people seriously affected by Typhoon Odette. In some parishes in southern Cebu, roads still lie on supports and debris. People line up in long lines for water and gasoline. There is no electricity or communication in the south of Cebu. Most families have been affected by the typhoon, people need food, clean water and hygiene kits. Father Antonio Labiao, Executive Secretary of Caritas in the Philippines, reports that several dioceses in the Visayas and Mindanao regions were severely affected by the typhoon and that they urgently need shelter, food, water and medicine. According to the first operational estimate, the typhoon devastated up to 10 dioceses. Among them, the Diocese of Cebu and the Dioceses of Tagbilaran, Masin and Surigao are seriously damaged. Yesterday, several dioceses held a special gathering during Sunday Masses to increase the response of the Church.